Good morning, everybody. Rob Ragu from New Outdoors. We're gonna take a few minutes today to show you how we do our bear bait. So this is Bear Baiting 101. To tell you what we use, we start with dog food as our base. You can use all sorts of different things, but the biggest factor I would say is don't use something that has great big chunks. If you have big pieces in your bait, the bear's gonna come in, they're gonna grab it, and then they're gonna run off in the woods to you know, chew on it for a while out there when you can't get a shot. So by using dog food, it's a bunch of little pieces. Some people use popcorn, some people will use um, almost like a, a trail mix kind of thing where you'll have grain mixed with molasses and corn. Uh, whole corn is also good. So basically, bottom line, I use dog food because A, it's easy to find, uh, B, it's relatively cheap. You can get uh, you know big bulk bags for not a lot of money. And then I wanna mix that dog food with either I use molasses for sweet or I'll use fryer grease oil. Again, a lot of bear baiting. <laughs> to get your bait inexpensively, it takes contacts. So talk to people that have restaurants, talk to people that maybe work at grocery stores that get rid of expired food. Uh, maybe your local donut shop throws out their donuts after a, a certain amount of time. So the more people you can talk to to get as much as you can, either free or a discounted price, the better off you are. So for us today, dog food mixed with fryer grease oil, then I also use my molasses as a different scent attractor. You'll see with my molasses, I put it over top of the bait barrel. I then have what I call my little bucket or bag of tricks. So in here, I basically keep scraps from over the winter. So if we're having steak or ribs or anything like that, I'll save the bones, I'll save the scraps, I put them all in Ziploc bags and I freeze them through the year. So I also throw that in the barrel, any kind of just different smell, especially your, your meats, barbecue sauces, lasagna, you know, things that smell really good. In this case, I just have some expired bacon that we're gonna throw out. Um, more on the scent attractant side, so not so much food in the barrel, but outside in the site around the barrel. I always use table syrup. Again, it's inexpensive. I think this was like a dollar or two dollars at Walmart. Um, I put it up in the tree so it drips down. Again, nice scent spread out. I use peanut butter and I use bacon grease. So again, this is something that I do over the winter. Anytime we cook our bacon, we'll put the bacon grease into a bar bottle and I save it then to spread it around the site. So there's a couple of other little things, but those are basically uh, you know, those are really the basics. Uh, other things you can use as really good scent attractors, if you have a, a trapper, if you are a trapper, beaver works really well. Normally with a beaver, what I'll do is I'll cut it into five pieces. I'll either wire it onto a tree or I'll put it into like a feed sack up in a tree. Uh, you can use jello or juice crystals. Just sprinkle that on the barrel or around the area. Um, sardines, sardines are a really good thing. You can take a sardine can, just crack the can a little bit, nail it up on a tree, poke a couple of holes in it. So again, you get that fish smell. So there's, there's lots of different techniques out there. Um, they're all good, they all work, but this is kind of our setup that we're doing today. So something to keep in mind is when you're going into your bait site, you always want to listen and watch. Hopefully you don't have a bear on the bait as you're coming in. It does happen though. So again, just safety wise, um, you want to not surprise the bear. You want to make some noise when you're going in so that he knows you're coming and uh, he'll get out of the way and allow you to rebate without any issues. So you can see there's a little bit of bait left in the barrel, but there's also some that's kind of wet and it's gotten mushy, so I don't like that. I'm gonna dump what's in there out and then I'm gonna put new fresh dry bait inside. Um, you know, it's one of those things, even though we're hunting these bears, I still want them to be healthy, so I wanna give them good food that's gonna, just that, keep them healthy, let them get bigger. And when it's soft and mushy in there, I just, I don't want it to get moldy on them. Okay, so we got most of it. So now I'm just gonna refill with the new dog food. Gonna add some of my fryer grease oil. And then I'm just gonna take one of my sticks, mix it up a little bit. Uh, at this point, you could throw in your food scraps or any other you know, treats that you have for them. This time, I'm just gonna throw a couple of slices of bacon, which we've got. Two little strips, this will be good. That smells nice. 
Who doesn't love bacon? The other thing I'll mention is the barrels that we're using. So as you can see, I'm using plastic barrels. Some people use metal barrels and both are fine. Um, this barrel has been here for probably 10 years, maybe even more than 10 years. So you can see, you know, they last. Um, I just cut a hole, probably about, you know, a foot square in it. Then I also cut a couple of other holes in the bottom. So if there's water that gets in, it can drain out if it's standing up. Uh, more than anything, it's just another spot for scent to come out. And then I also have a couple holes at the back here where I have the barrel attached to a tree with a rope. You don't need a huge chain, but it's, I mean, some people do and that's fine. Uh, but a rope is going to keep it in place because the bears will come and if there isn't a rope attached They're going to drag that barrel off into the woods. So I have the barrel secured to the tree It's a plastic barrel The reason I use a barrel is again to help keep that bait dry longer so it keeps it fresh and good longer uh, it Keeps other animals out like squirrels and raccoons although raccoons will get in but it just helps protect the bait for the bears And you're gonna save more bait that way Then when I place it I have my food in I'm actually doing it perpendicular to the stand. So this way the tree stands over there, the bear's gonna bring his head in here. So I'm automatically training that bear to come in broadside to the barrel, which presents that broadside double lung shot up at the stand. And from here, now I just jam it full of logs. And the reason you jam it full of logs, again, it's to help keep the squirrels, the raccoons out. And I think there's something about, I don't, I don't know. I think there's something that bears almost think it's more natural that if they're coming into a food source, they have to dig around a little bit. So again, it protects the bait from other animals. Uh, I think the bears like it. And the other thing it does is it keeps the bears here longer. So that gives the hunter more opportunity to judge that bear, the size of it, whether he wants to shoot it or not, uh, because it has to spend a little bit more time to pull these logs out. Next, we get into our scent attractants. So like I say, I use table syrup, I use bacon grease, I use peanut butter as my main scent attractants. One thing I really like to do, actually, if you look behind you here, there's a nice tree that's on an angle and you can see the bare claw marks here on the tree already. So I will use any of these, it doesn't matter what where, but uh, actually I'm gonna use the, the bacon grease here. Cause what I like is if you put it bacon grease or the peanut butter on a tree, just use a stick, you put it up there. If you do it, especially if it's facing the south, it's gonna melt into the bark. So it's like, it, it keeps your scent there that much longer. So the, the bacon grease, the fat, all renders into the bark down the tree and you'll see the bears will come up, they'll rub their necks on it, they'll rub their backs on it. And again, you know, you can see where they've been scratching here just to try to dig away at it a little bit. So that this one, uh, like I say, we're gonna do maple syrup on another one. I'm gonna put some bacon grease on this one. So I'm just using a stick I found on the ground, scooping out that bacon grease and basically just painting the tree with it. And this is basically facing west. So once it gets the afternoon sun, it's gonna more or less melt into the tree, into the bark. And that's gonna help it keep that smell in the area that much longer. And again, you can see the claw marks here where They've been working away at it. Next, we can use the same stick, but I'm gonna find another tree and put some peanut butter up on it. We can use that one. Again, we're just painting the tree. You can do the outside of the bark. Nice thing if you have them is you can put it where there's a branch sticking out. Again, it just kind of holds the, holds the product there that much more. There, so we have our bacon grease tree, our peanut butter tree. So again, we're gonna put our table syrup. We're just a couple of feet away from the bait again. And I like doing it on a tree that has either a bump or something like this, again, that it, it just flows down the outside. One comment I'll make is you don't want to do this on a tree that's right next to where you have your trail camera. You basically want your food, all of your food and your scents on one side of your bait and then your trail camera on the other side of your bait. So that looks good. 
We have our food in the barrel. Uh, we have some different scent attractants out around the bait. The last thing we're gonna do before we leave is it's again, just more scent. We're gonna throw some molasses on top of the barrel. Nice dark molasses on a dark barrel. We're gonna have that sun hitting it. It's gonna smell really nice. And with this nice breeze we have today, that's gonna spread that scent all through the forest. So again, it's gonna reach out to a larger area to hopefully attract more bears. Again, you can use either molasses or you can use fryer oil. I put it on the barrel. I also put it on the wood that leads into the barrel. So what happens with this is when the bears do come in and they start taking the wood out, it gets all over their paws. And when it gets on their paws and they walk away down their various trails, they're just helping spread that scent that much more again. So you could have another bear cross their trail, they're gonna smell that molasses 100 yards away, and then they're gonna follow it back to the bait. So again, you're just spreading that scent out at every opportunity you can. One last comment I'll leave you with is, you know, a lot of people talk about stink baits and really strong smelling baits. To start a brand new site, I can understand it. I've done it in the past, um, but there's really, there's no need to have, if you're just maintaining a bait, there's no need to have horrible, stinking, rotting, you know, smells. The hunters aren't gonna like it in the stand. You're not gonna like it if you're downwind and the bears really, again, it may attract them, but they're not gonna eat it if it's rotten. So I've always gone more on the sweet side. Like I say, I have molasses, I have oil, I have uh, you know, jello crystals, fruit powdery type stuff. So it's all sweet, nice smelling scents. And I, I really believe that those do just as well if not better than stink baits. So again, I think stink baits have their place if it's a brand new site and you're trying to attract bears into the area for the first time. But once you have a spot established, I stay away from the rotting, smelly stuff. Hopefully you liked our bear baiting segment. Hopefully you learned something and it was helpful. Uh, if you did like it, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel where we're gonna have lots of other educational tips on how we do things uh, at the two lodges. This was focused on bear, we're doing deer, moose, turkey, all sorts of educational stuff if you're looking into getting uh, into hunting and fishing. So hopefully you enjoyed, give us a comment and a like, we'd sure appreciate it.